Welcome back. Uh, Gossip Girl actress Kelly Rutherford is in an international custody battle with her ex-husband. A judge granted Daniel Gersh, who lives in France, custody of their two young kids. Now, Rutherford's children, they're three and five, were born and raised here in America. This is difficult to follow, but just stick with me. Last month, the judge said the kids had to move overseas to live with dad full time. That's because he was forced to leave the country. His visa was revoked in April. There's a lot of conflicting stories as to why, but revoked, okay? Rutherford says she flies to France to see the kids whenever possible and fears for their well-being. The actress fought back tears during an appearance on The View yesterday. Take a look at what she said. My little girl said, you know, I want to come home, Mom. I want to come back to New York. And my son, who's kind of been brainwashed that where he is is so much better, but he's, he always says, Mama, I love you so much. You're in my heart. I love you, Mama. How old is he? Uh, five. He'll be six this month, or October 17th, yeah. Will you see him on his birthday? Oh, I'm going to try, yeah. I mean, I go every time my work allows me to leave. You know, I'm filming, and then I get on a plane every mm -hmm. time. But I do think that the children are, are at risk because I'm now, I was the primary parent. Now I'm the, the visitor, and there's a lot of things being said to them every day that we all hear that aren't things that kids need to, to hear. Wow. The two have been involved in this uh, bitter custody battle since they broke up in 2009. Family law attorney Randy Kessler joins me now. Randy, I know you see this all the time, and it probably never gets easier to see something like that, does it? It breaks your heart. It, it does break your heart. Uh, you know, there is a silver lining, which is that she at least acknowledges he wouldn't put the kids in harm's way. He okay. hasn't kidnapped the kids, so it's a choice between two at least decent parents, which is better than a lot of other cases. That's true. Know. That's true. Um, how unusual of an arrangement is this Though, because what you explained to me is that in situations like this, the children also have their own attorney, which is a guardian ad litem. So each parent has an attorney, and then there's a, an attorney assigned for to look out for the children's best interest. And even that attorney said it was in the children's best interest to stay with their mother, and that still did not happen, Randy. Right. You know, you have a, a question of judgment, okay. and when parties can't resolve their own issues, the judge decides, and the judge, we give the judge all that power. The judge has the knowledge, the legal knowledge. The judge can gauge the demeanor of the witnesses, mm -hmm. can see what they look like, how they're reacting. And the judge said that he seems to facilitate the relationship with mom very well. And it seemed like mom maybe was a little angry or dead. Maybe some of that trickled down. You know, we don't know why. We can't get inside the judge's head. But the judge had the best perspective. And we as a society, we entrust that to the judge. We can't figure it out. That's why we should figure it out ourselves. Uh, right, and, but how, how difficult is that? Certainly, I, I get what you're saying, that the best is for the parents to try to work it out right. before it gets to court, but how common is that? You know, it happens, uh, unbelievably, and, and I don't mean that they should have agreed, she should have agreed to give him custody. Oh, no, 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 I, no, 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 not at all, not but at she all. Could, she could have agreed to give him maybe a lot more time than she thought he should get. Mm -hmm. You never know. I mean, it's a big risk to go to court when your kids are at stake, so I, I'm not blaming her or no, him. No, 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 but, but this is still a very unusual arrangement, is it not, that these children who were born and raised here are sent to go live in another country and not even the birth country of that parent? It, you know, it is bizarre when you look at it in a nutshell or a snapshot like mm -hmm. that. But really, the question is, what's in the children's best interest? Okay. And almost everything, including the kitchen sink, can go mm -hmm. into evidence. Mm -hmm. You know, who raises the kids, what are the... You know, what we say in our office is the people that say the most nice things about the other parent often achieve custody because the judge thinks if they have custody, mm -hmm. they're going to make sure the kids know and love both parents. And maybe there were some, you know, harsh feelings or harsh words. Who knows how it unfolded? But the real question is, if the kids live in France with their dad, mm -hmm. their life will be like this. And if they live in, you know, New York or maybe now L.A. with their mom, it'll be like this. And the judge thought living in France with their dad would be a better situation for them. It, it is a little bit awkward because the kids have always lived in New York. So that mere change in and of itself is going to be strange and, and unusual for the kids. So right now she is um, appealing. I know it's difficult for, for you to, to sure. gauge this, but um, d does she have a chance on appeal? You know, never say never. But mm -hmm. remember, appellate courts don't look at what's good for the kids. They look at was there an error of law? Was okay. that within the judge's discretion? And I think it was within the judge's discretion because mm -hmm. both parents are fit parents. So mm -hmm. the only question is which situation is better? And if the judge says that one's better and the judge heard all the evidence, it's going to be a very uphill battle. But Alan Dershowitz is quite a lawyer. When parents um, are going through very painful situations like this, um, it can be extremely damaging to the children. I'm sure you have seen that in your practice up close. Right. Um, 
It, it can be, but you know, these are experts and these are people that have a lot of money and hopefully they have therapists and nannies and other people that really care for the children surrounding them. And, and I think they're getting very good advice. I mean, I don't think either one is really going to put the kids in the middle. Let's hope. You let's know, hope. Mom, mom's a little bit more desperate now because she doesn't see she her doesn't kids. She doesn't have her kids. And you know, let's hope that if this is the permanent solution, or at least the next couple of years, she can accept it and say, I'm going to work with the system and within the system instead of just being angry about it and venting about it because ultimately the kids are going to grow up and they're going to know both parents. Let's hope, uh, let's hope both parents can continue to put the kids uh, first, that they both can. It's always the goal. Randy, thank you so much. Thank you.